me going into my final semester before completing my bachelor's in physics, I thought now would be a good time to talk about the three most difficult physics courses that I've taken and talk a little bit why I found those courses so challenging. I hope it goes without saying that these are my experiences and might not translate directly to yours as well. People have different degrees of math under their belt by the time they take certain physics courses which wildly skews how difficult one might find the class. With that being said, let's get started with number one. Classical Mechanics. Now you might be wondering how the hell one of the first physics courses you take as a physics major ended up on this list. The reason Classical Mechanics is on this list for me is because I didn't start out as a physics major. I started out as a biology major but learned very quickly that I didn't have the memory or the desire to learn that many names of that many different things. The problem was, as a former biology student, my first line of defense was making flashcards or memorizing things. And you can get away with that memorization-based mentality in Physics 1 and even Physics 2. You can memorize Maxwell's equations, the kinematic equations, and you can memorize every single case that you would apply the equations for if you want to. But once you get to your first upper level course in classical mechanics, that doesn't cut it. By the way, if throughout this video I use the word you, just know that I mean I. I never want to assert that because I find something challenging that that means others must as well. But anyways, classical mechanics was the first course that demanded that I start learning to think critically. I also don't mean to imply that biology majors don't think critically. It's really hard to not put your foot in your mouth in these videos. Put my foot in my mouth, not don't put your foot in my mouth. Jesus. In university physics, you really take for granted how many physical quantities you're able to neglect, like air resistance and most forms of friction. In classical mechanics, you learn the difference between things like linear and quadratic air resistance, where essentially one you still neglect, and the other one you neglect but you feel bad about it. Long story short, classical mechanics withdraws all of those nice simplifications you made in university physics. So if you were like me, and you're like, which case does this apply to? Well, there's no real cases anymore, it's derive as you go. In hindsight, the later sections involving Lagrangian and Hamiltonian mechanics are really interesting, but I hadn't yet developed the mathematical rigor yet to appreciate things like the calculus of variations. In short, I think that classical mechanics will be something I benefit more from in graduate school, or I guess I wish I would have taken it a little bit later. Nonetheless, it still made it a particularly difficult course for me. <laughs> Thermodynamics is a course that's split into two sections, thermodynamics and statistical mechanics. Thermodynamics is concerned with the macroscopic description of how quantities like temperature, entropy, enthalpy, volume, and pressure relate to one another. Not to mention the interplay between these quantities and concepts like work and energy. Put simply, the zeroth law of thermodynamics says that there's a game. The first law says that you can't win the game, but you can break even. The second law says that you can break even, but only at absolute zero. And then the third law says that you can't reach absolute zero. Solving problems in thermodynamics requires employing the use of concepts like partial derivatives and total derivatives and explicitly writing what physical quantities you're holding constant. Now that's all fine and dandy, but the problem is that these equations change depending on what equation of state you're using. Equations of state have to do with setting functions relating pressure, volume, temperature, and mass equal to zero, and fixing certain ones of those quantities so that you're able to determine the others. And it's not always very clear how to go about doing this, which is why I've really struggled with this section of thermodynamics. Statistical mechanics says that you can describe these thermodynamic processes microscopically, and if you can determine the energy of the particles, that you can derive the equations of states statistically. I can probably attribute my A in the course solely because of how well I did in this section. Statistical mechanics seemed to click more for me than thermodynamics did. Thankfully, most graduate schools are concerned more with statistical mechanics rather than classical thermodynamics. I guess thermo and statistical physics was more tedious than anything. One of the founders, Boltzmann, spent his whole life studying statistical mechanics and thermodynamics, and then he killed himself. But his student, Ehrenfest, spent the rest of his life studying statistical and thermodynamics. But then he killed himself. Let's just move on to the third one. <laughs> Atomic Physics is a 400 level senior course that is available at my university. It's the first course I've taken that's actually a profession. No one calls themselves a classical mechanic or a quantum physicist, unless you're a journalist doing a story on pop science. Those other subjects are more tools that are used to describe the professions. For example, quantum mechanics is used to describe atomic physics, or quantum mechanics is used to describe nuclear physics, or condensed matter, or something along those lines. But the course in atomic physics that I took was actually
actually taught by a theoretical atomic physicist. What made the course difficult is that the prerequisite was quantum mechanics. Though it's expected that by the time you take atomic physics, you've already had a semester of quantum mechanics under your belt, I was taking the two classes at the same time. Now the reason I did this is because the alternative was taking a course in accelerator physics instead the next semester. Now accelerator physics is great, but that's what my whole research internship was about and I wanted to try something new and challenging, so I got the academic overwrite to let me into the class. This leads to one of my favorite things about being a physics student. There was only four people in the class. We essentially started the semester off by solving the Schrodinger equation in three dimensions. We then spent about 10 years talking about the Stern-Gerlach experiment. By the time we got to multi-electron atoms, I had no idea what I was doing, but I knew how to do it. What I mean by that is, though I didn't have any intuition for what it was I was doing, I knew how to go through the motions of solving the problem. By the time the final exam came around, I had a much better understanding of the physics we were actually doing. Not to mention, this class is probably the reason quantum mechanics isn't on this list. Atomic physics made quantum mechanics a cakewalk. A lot of atomic physics consisted of guessing a wave function and then using variational methods to get better guesses for the wave function that placed upper bounds on the ground state energy of the atom. Try saying that five times fast. For this class, you had to understand what made wave functions symmetric or anti-symmetric, and what types of particle exchange demanded one wave function over the other. How these particles behave determined how you guess a wave function in the first place for the variational methods that I discussed just earlier. Oh, and we can't forget about perturbation theory. Essentially, atomic physics just consisted of applying completely new concepts that I hadn't seen in any other class yet. And the class just seemed very fast-paced, so when the professor would say something like, and that's what we'd expect, right? I'd just be like... But anyways, looking back, I could have had a better experience in classical mechanics had I developed my math background a little bit stronger before taking the class, and worked on emphasizing thinking critically more so than seeing what case did this follow. One thing with thermodynamics is that when you see a quantity derived, other quantities are usually derived in a similar way. This kept me from searching for the motivation behind the derivation, which would have given me a better experience in the class. As for atomic physics, I mean, I took a class before I was qualified to take the class. Just don't do that. What's a class that you think you struggled with the most? Let me know in the comments section, and I'll see you all there.